G'day, g'day, g'day. I'm John Mackay and welcome to our program on the origin and history of life and death and the universe and anything left over. We've been in the bush here excavating a skeleton with one bit of evidence that shows there's no way man could have ever come from any chimpanzee-like creature. Have a look down here. Now, it's not the jaw. Nice set of teeth though. And it's not the legs. Although this bloke obviously walked on all fours. But what's that? Now it's one piece of bone that no human being has. And every ape and chimpanzee and dogs and rats and most mammals do. It's called the baculum or the penis bone. And the male uses it to penetrate the female during reproduction. Now we human males, we have a brilliantly designed hydraulic system. It's one of those embarrassing little bits of God's evidences that we were made absolutely unique and unrelated to any other creature on the face of the planet. I mean, if you need one of those to reproduce, then you can't evolve into one of these without becoming extinct. Provocative evidence may be but surely convincing to a new generation of young geologists such as the finder of our latest big gold deposit here in Australia, Liam Fromeyer. I've been working as a professional geologist in the gold mining industry for the last five years or so and uh, while uh, a mainstream university education has been crucial in helping me find uh, more of this sort of stuff, um, it's also locked me into a particular type of world view, one where millions of years uh, is, is basically a given. These long time frame based theories um, often conflicted with what I was seeing out in the field and in uh, some mine sites. Um, an example was where I was working out in western Queensland where we had a, a large sedimentary based dike. Uh, we'd had thin section work and everything done on it. The, sin the thin section was telling us it was an altered limestone to carbonate, yet we were working in an environment which was over one and a half billion years old. So for that uh, system to have been liquefied and squeezed up through these really old rocks above it, uh, brecciating and busting up the rocks above, uh, it simply didn't fit with the, with the long time frames. In this region alone we've been exploring for metal mineralisation, uh, discarding the old vast ages of the earth uh, models and hypotheses. My openness to view things on a short time frame, uh, rapid deposition model that's consistent with the young earth view uh, has led me to some successful finds. This is the Hell Creek Formation in Montana. <laughs> Don't geologists have such funny names for places but Really, they're not so funny because like older words like Devonian, we really just named them after the place you first studied. I guess if you haven't been to Devon in England and had your scones and jam and cream, it just sort of goes over your head a bit, but that's what we do. Nothing to do with millions of years of evolution. These are all place names. So uh, I guess you need to know your geography as well. Oh, and yes, look, the average person sees millions of years. You look at the textbooks, and it says these rocks were laid down between 65 and 67 million years ago. Now I've got some old friends, but none of them are as old as that. But I tell you what you can do if you want to run a test. I mean, some of you are, have struggled as to whether you could believe the world was created in just six days because of the evidence of the millions of years. Well, let's just run a check on how much time actually is preserved in those rocks and whether all the dead things, the fossils, really do show life has evolved. Follow me. <laughs> 